guys. Sherry Shaw here and my wonderful guest today, Lisa Zambetti. Thank you for tuning in. I'm so happy you're here. Casting icon. She's cast so many things and we're going to delve right into it. She laughed because she's like, no, I really have it. But she really has. And she's really wonderful. And we're going to cover so many great things today. And um, so you can watch this obviously on YouTube or you can just tune in and share a shot studio talk where you are right now because you're listening to it. Lisa. Hi. Hey. <coughs> wow. Thank you so much. You're such a pro at this. You're just <laughs> like on. I love it. I'm I just, I like to... I like to riff. Honestly, I wish I had my own show. I would like to interview people. I have the best time doing it. I love listening and connecting. It's my favorite thing in the whole wide world. Yeah. But yes, tell us. What were you going to say before I rudely cut you off? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't even remember now. Um, no, I just, it's great to see you. You know, it's, it's great to be able to connect with you and not just texting. And I mean, it's great to see anybody in this kind of climate, you know. Here's my hug. That's my virtual hug. God, we as artists and... You know, casting directors and, and direct, we're all artists and we need the human touch. We need the physicality of people in our circle so much. Has it made you almost appreciate your job more? So when you get back to, to really getting into the nuts and bolts and having physical interaction, has it made you yeah. just more grateful? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I am really missing that, that um, in-person experience, although, you know, there's been a trend over the past few years to have everything on tape. So they, there have been fewer and fewer producer sessions live, but um, I, I, def, I definitely, there's nothing that can compare to something that's live and, and tactile and mm. I don't know experience, but we're all going to have to transition. I mean, it's going to be a very, very long time before you're going to have in, in my opinion, in-person auditions again, unless it's for something so big that they can invent an audition room that's got like plexiglass and, mm -hmm. and all the protections. So we're all, you know, casting directors and actors, I, and I can see them getting more and more savvy on how to self tape and on how to do a live Zoom audition. And I think, you know, it's what everybody's gonna have to get used to. I 1000% agree. So tell us, what is the difference for you? Have you done any auditions yet on Zoom that you've had to interview people on Zoom? Because I think this is how it's going to transition. Aside from actors, of course, sending in a powerful self tape. So I want to talk about both those things. Then I want to segue into how you got started and the last and doing NCIS and what that experience was like. So uh, let's talk about that. First. Yeah. So I haven't had a Zoom audition yet, but I've been teaching plenty of Zoom classes where right. you redirect the, the actors, give them notes, and try to get a performance out of them. So that's given me lots of practice, and, and it's completely possible to do this via Zoom. You know, The only thing that's, that's hard is, is physically where they are and where their camera is and the lighting, you know, I can't control any of that, but I mm -hmm. can give them notes to improve their performance. But what I'm seeing is the more classes that I've taught, I, I see a definite um, difference in the quality that actors are putting mm -hmm. into their, to their setup. And, and they should be there. Many more of them are having professional backdrops instead of something like my backdrop. You know, and so like, oh, all right. I'm right. in my office right now, and this would not be if I was an actor. This would not be, and if you were an actor, that would not be your backdrop. Right. You have, tell us what the ba best backdrop would look like. Um, I mean, that's up to everybody. I, my, I can show you. There's a there's a backdrop that I really love that I've been showing. Yes. Because it, it I'll, I'll find it in a second, but because it, it really, I think it emphasizes anybody's skin tone, no matter oh. how how dark your skin tone is. I think it just really, you know, makes everybody seem really warm. I don't like that blue backdrop that was so popular I think like in the 80s or 90s um I just the, I don't know. yeah but that's a the brighter blue you like it more of a grayish tone probably yeah although I do I yeah. I have to say I've had some students um uh Dora Kiss that's her name and she brought in she was not brought in she was online with a black background and it, her skin tone it looks so rich and delicious I was like oh I think I'm going to change and tell everybody to do that. Yeah, I mean, but so it's going to depend. I'm going to try to. You can cut this part up, and I'm going to try to look up. Um, yes, I would love to see it and recommend it. So, but so, do you agree with me? Because I do. This is your box, your Zoom room. That's your living circumstances. So when people are auditioning for you, do you just like them to look at the reader and be 
center and just tell the story. Do you mind a little bit of behavior? Because like right now, then I could just grab this or, you know, hey, I got a phone call. Am I seeing? Do you know what I mean? So yeah. do you, are you more particular to clean and just visually tell it? emotionally tell it or do behavioral life as well? I do think the one benefit of being able to self-tape is you can have some really nice behavior, just like <laughs> the coffee cup or taking off your glasses, something that doesn't distract, but it just, it, it, it's kind of, if you can use it, great. Mm -hmm. you know, if, if whatever yeah. is around that you can just seamlessly use in your behavior, I do like that. Um, but not just to randomly do it, you know? No, um, it has to have a reason. Because just to find ways to make us see you in the role just seamlessly. So that's, you know, that's what I like. Um, so living in your square, do you ever have people when they're doing scenes for you get up, move back? Because there's depth. Like you can get up. Like in my scene study classes, I have people like go back to the room and get that vase behind you that's on that counter sill and pour and water a plant. But like, but that, I think that's more scene study than auditioning. Yeah, it's very I, different I think, muscle. No, I think that that might be too distracting. Mm -hmm. You don't want them to be thinking about that. You don't want them to notice anything. Let's be right. Like, so, right? you know, so have your little area and your little little area that just is an extension of the thoughts and the life of the character. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Uh, All right. So in your self tapes, which we're just going to cover that first. Okay. What are your pet peeves about them? What are your, what are things that actors do in the first 10 seconds that really grab your attention and make you go, Oh, I'm in. How do you, how do they drop, help you drop into their world? Because that is the key element. The best way is to feel like they're very present. You know, and that's, I don't know if that's something, Sherry, you can teach, but to feel like it's not on tape, to feel like it's just new thought happening in the moment, um, that's the most important thing. And actually, I mean, I would say that if it's a great performance, we're not going to notice the background or the yeah. light. You know, I mean, those are just nice things to have. And certainly other producers who aren't from our world, they might, you know, respond a little better to a cleaner, more professional looking tape. But mm -hmm. um, in general, we just want to see great acting. And right, the, you're like, you're so right to uh, comment upon the first line, the first two lines or the line before the scene starts. Like what was the, what just yes. happened before the scene starts? So actors who come in, you know, embodying that there's a world beyond the little scene, I think that that goes a lot, that carries a long way on tape. So it's even like turning into the tape mm -hmm. or walking into the shot or some kind of energy that starts it. I think that can mm -hmm. be really powerful. I 1000% agree with you because then you know how you do get present, Lisa? You do all the homework of your material and you layer it up and you do everything you can possibly do, emotional life, behavioral life, internal life, thoughts, having every beat worked out, and then you throw it all away. Exactly. Present. That's exactly. how you get present. And the nice thing also about self-taping that you can't do in a, in a live read is your voice can have a lot more nuance to it. You know, you mm. can really um, bring the moments down to feel much more intimate than you can when you're, you know, standing in front of, of a bunch of producers. So, you know, take advantage of that. You know, you can whisper on a self-tape. You can yeah. you know, there are things. And on the other hand, you know, please don't scream and blast <laughs> everybody's ears out. And, and let's just, can I just get your opinion on having a really good reader? Who's oh, I would say that. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. Uh, but yeah, that that is when you're self taping. It's hard because sometimes your reader is right next, you know, is right next to the camera and closest to the mic. So really try to train your reader to, you know, just have a very soft conversational um, tone. I think that that works a lot better because it can be so distracting. Very exactly. Yeah. So what, what is it for you that really grabs? Is it just about the work? Do you, do you like actors to, you just don't know, is it random every time? Is it just it's, someone's inner energy that just you connect to? You know, casting is very much a gut reaction and it's only mm. later that you can break it down and maybe explain why, but it's mm -hmm. so much from the gut and that's a good and a bad thing for actors because how, how do you train to be good for my gut, you know? All you can do is do your best work and just, you know, trust that 
if you're doing the work, we will lean in to your audition, mm. you know, instead mm -hmm. of like, all right, you know, I can't <laughs> get it. you're the crying girl. You're the Don't sweet. attack us. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So just um, some, you know, showing us some intimacy in your work is very attractive and vulnerability is very attractive. How are you feeling about, um, for me, when I have taught, well, when I teach and all my teachers, I like to tell actors just to give an essence of the, the, uh, the dress, the wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Are you, because I know, let's talk about NCIS and all those roles. That's, it's criminal uh, minds. So just to oh say my it. God. It's okay. <laughs> Why am I saying NCIS? No, okay. That is so. People say that all the time. They, they get yeah. us you know, mixed up all the time. And that's, I knew it's criminal minds because Harry is my neighbor and he was the, one of the oh, executive right. live producers. So I know it's criminal minds. Oh, great. Faux pas. That's okay. okay. That's okay. Criminal that's minds. So, but, so all those roles that you had to do, do you, did you, and do you in the future for particular roles, do you like them? Do you like actors to dress as a doctor, to dress as a nurse, to dress lawyery looking? Tell me. So what I can tell you is it may seem corny, it may seem cheesy, but dressing to suggest the character is incredibly powerful and it's something that you can control. That doesn't mean to dress in a costume, but I literally can go mm. through many, many roles of actors who booked and I can show you dressed, 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 dressed. It works. So if you're playing a detective, wear a suit with a tie if you're playing a detective with hard soled shoes because you will walk in or you will appear on tape very differently than mm. if you were just wearing khakis and a sh you know just a regular shirt if you're going to play a bartender please you know have that rock and roll t-shirt you know have your bracelets on you know to just suggest it but not feel like you're in a costume, but just to make it feel effortless and that we can just easily feel like we can just take you from the screen and put you right on our show. So what about like scrubs though? What about doctor scrubs? You like that. So you like that. Okay. It's all, it's all, you know, everyone's opinion is going to be different, but it's not everybody's opinion because okay. I, I don't know if you remember Sherry, but I, you know, I have a database where I went back and looked at all of the auditions that I'd ever had on criminal minds and many, many other shows. And I looked at what worked and wearing a That's scrub so top that is broken in, you know, really just broken in and fits you. And, you know, you're wearing your regular jeans and your sneakers, you know, below. That is the perfect silhouette that will completely support your, your audition. Now do not okay. get like a brand new white lab coat <laughs> that is cracked out of the package. Now that's not going to work because you're not going to be comfortable. But right. I think, again, if you looked at all of the, the medical examiners that we ever cast on Criminal Minds, I mean, just like so many you if you looked at their auditions like 99 percent of them are either going to have worn scrubs top or really broken in um lab coat now it's not that it's not the lab coat is not getting them the job but if they're competing against you know five other people who are good who are really really good everybody's a good actor that i'm going to bring in for my producers what is the one thing that is just going to give you that subconscious just a little bit more? Wow. Wow. Right? Okay. It scrubs and you're not, you're the one person who, you know, isn't. Yeah. Psych it's all psychology. It's all, you know, subconscious. Well, I buy it. I buy it 100%. As long as the actor feels really comfortable, as long That's as it doesn't feel like, Oh, look, I just got this from target and I'm just taking it out off the hanger Absolutely. and it feels so uncomfortable. Right. Absolutely. So, so I what? Found, yeah, oh, I found the background. If you, <gasps> yes, do, yes, yes, um, and then I'll share the screen. And this is my okay. This is wonderful. wonderful. Okay, this is a wonderful actress, Ashley. And I'm gonna just um, but describe it too because this will be on audio. So what okay. what is the color of the background before you flip your screen? Okay, so and I've seen this background in person. I know where she shot this. You have to allow me to um to um screen share, Lily. Lily. Yes. Lily. Second. Um, okay. So it's kind of like a mauve. Oh. Tone, but the way that the light hits it, it, it just looks like very deep and rich. Um, Is there a floor light? Is the since we're now we're discussing the, yeah, the lighting. Yeah, no, I think in this particular room, there are like two gigantic kind of amber lights on either side. I mean, this is in a professional studio, but um, mm. when I show you, you'll see, you'll, you'll see what I mean. 
No, but can't. And, and as you're looking for it, the lighting and the sound is really, really important because if you're blurred out or in a darker shade, you want somebody who's lit that's just gonna make your eyes attract towards yeah. listening to what they have to say. Well, we used to be really forgiving about self tapes because it was usually like an emergency if somebody had to self tape mm. or they were out of town. And so you kind of just like, you know, it's okay if, not, if everything isn't perfect, but now, you know, the quality of these tapes are just getting so good, so good that it, you're, you're going to stand out if you, okay. Can you see this? Can you oh see yeah. This? Oh, you like that color. Okay. okay. No, I like that it's color too. He looks said amazing. That most of the time you order this, but there was one time that you ordered this. So I just love it. Get it. You don't even really notice the background. Like when it's a, a really sharp blue or or something, some other color, it, I just mm -hmm. notice the background. With this, I didn't. Now she has very fair skin, but I've seen. Oh, I love it. But I've seen tapes with other actresses of, of varying tones of skin that it still it still looks really something about it is really warm and you know no matter what you're wearing in front of this I think it'll look good whereas in front of a blue background mm. you easily clash anyway so this was sort so of what we're seeing we're seeing a sort of a mauvey darker lavender color but the lighting is the key because she is popping okay thanks Lily you can bring that back you can bring us back. Okay, so bring us back off the screen, back to our, our regular place. I don't know, we're on somebody uh, else's screen I will, now. I will stop sharing. Okay, there we go. Oh, there we go. Um, she looked amazing, just yeah. amazing. It's so it's important. Terrible. But if you're if you're at home, there's simpler things and the backdrops. But those blue, a lot of people have those blue, and I agree with you. I like a softer tone that it just feels less. Ah, what's that in the background? You know what I mean? It just seems a little bit more calmer. But it is yeah. the lighting. And I think um, um, and lighting is so important. Yeah, you know? and, and, and the nice thing is, is that you can get a really good light for not that, not that expensive. You can go on Amazon and you know, get, get a, even a background kit that, that they're pretty affordable now. So you can set up your own you know, little studio. So it's like, all, hopefully it's always set up so you could just jump in and, and do your audition you know, if you have the room. Um, I think it's just going to be so important to figure that out, you know? Oh my God. I think a lot of the actors have figured it out, especially if you're in Zoom classes, you're getting that rhythm about being on Zoom because I think aside from the self tapes, you're going to have callbacks now on Zoom and you better yeah. be working your box and you better understand you can come closer <laughs> or you could come away or you could be over here or you can yeah. uh, bring in a character over there. I think it's exactly. really, really important. Yeah. Um, no, let's talk okay. about... Let's talk about your start in this fabulous industry on Criminal Minds. No, but before that, how, so how did it parlay for you? How did you get all involved in being a casting director? Yeah, I, I was an actor in New York City for many, many years, and I acted on Broadway, off Broadway, you know, and with Oh, wonderful. Of, yeah, lots of theater companies. And then at some point, I just got interested in casting, and I made the transition. And, you know, you start as an intern, and you just work your way up those, you know, few rungs. And I was just very lucky that um, I had a lot of different offices that I worked for because I'd get on a show and the show would get canceled. So, mm -hmm. I, so I, but I worked with some, like the top casting directors in both New York and LA. So I could kind of learn so many different um, aesthetics and yes. you know, how, how they do what they do. Um, it just was a great education until I finally landed at Criminal Minds. And, and how was, wonderful was that? How oh did you love it so much? I loved it. I think I was on for, I don't know, seven years or something. And it's just, it's a totally different experience to be on a show for that long and have a family and a show uh, that just runs itself and you get to know people on such a deep level. Uh, I knew every one of the writers, every director. You just had such access that a lot of casting directors don't get because casting is like in a different city than where they where the studio is. And and we were just lucky we were just all together on the same campus. And so you get really close to people. That's so lovely. And I think that has something to do with the success of a show as well. Because when there's a family essence underneath behind the scenes, it creates a momentum. And that show was done really, really well. I've had so many actors on that show, not that I can watch that show because it was so upsetting to me, yeah. but I would watch their scenes, you know, click, click through, you know, but um, yeah. Yeah. so, so it's a thing for you. You love it. You just love it. And what, what are you up to now? 
oh, like everybody else, we're just sort of, you know, ready to get back to work. I was working on a pilot before the quarantine, so I'm hoping that it, you know, continues and gets to shoot. And, and I've actually booked two more pilots, but everybody and I've, that I've cast the lead role in, but we're just waiting for the green light to be able to, you know, to finish and know where we're shooting, know when we're shooting. So yes. there's so many actors out there who really want the industry to get started again. We do too, but we want to make yeah. sure it is safe, 100% safe. And that's something I do want to bring up. Um, Sherry, is this yes. waivers? I don't know. What is your feeling about actors? The union actors are not going to sign waivers per SAG after, but a right. lot of non-union actors who are, you know, some some projects are moving forward right now. Yes, um, and they're being asked to sign waivers. So, what do you think about that? I think that people need to be smart, and I think your life is more important than a one-week job. And I think that if you do sign a waiver, because everyone, I can't judge anybody for their choices. I've had students at, because my studio is global. I've got some people in Chicago right now. Somebody was doing a movie. Of course, I can make a judgment about it, but it's up to them. You know what I mean? You're risking, you are at risk. But if you wear a mask in between and gloves and you wash your hands constantly, um, there are ways to make it safe for yourself. Okay. So, you know, and I think mentally is the other side of it because it's hard not to work. So mentally you have to weigh out the side, but I know people that have died from this. So it's, it's a, yeah. it's a difficult situation, but to each his own, but you have to stay safe. And the waiver is to protect the production company, I'm assuming, right? Right. It is. And so what concerns me, I completely agree. Like, you know, you have to make your own decision. I know that you want to be working. Um, but what, what worries me, for one thing, I just think, you know, the waiver is not going to hold up in any court of law, I don't think, because uh, there are already laws on OSHA that protect you. So if you get sick from a contaminated set or some kind of negligence, that waiver is not going to help the producers because there are already OSHA laws that will hold them responsible. But oh. so there's, that's one thing. Um, and, and uh, you know, there are waivers in all different kinds of professions. So not just acting, but the other mm -hmm. thing is like, if you sign the waiver and the producers mm -hmm. are like, shoot, okay, everybody's covered by this waiver. They might be just a little lax here and a little oh. there because they're like, well, if somebody gets sick, I'm not going to be responsible. I mean, they don't mean to hurt people, but in the yeah. chaos yeah. of production, you know, corners can get cut. And so the thing is, don't, don't, you know, sign or don't sign the waiver. Maybe if you don't sign it, they'll still hire you. I, who knows? But the thing that you need, the actors need to ask is what is the protocol? Tell me what are the safety protocols before I get on set? Because by then it's going to be too late. And um, so they have, they should be able to articulate to you exactly what safety precautions are going to, are going to happen. You just have to demand that, you know, waiver or not. I agree. One, I, no, but you know what? Sorry, I just crossed my legs. I agree 100%. But, but you know what? Here's the thing about that. You have to do that with any contract that you sign as actors. Yeah. You know what I mean? At any job that you do, you want to be that smart business person that takes care of yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think it applies to everything. I kind of mm -hmm. do. I think you need to be a sharpshooter on all levels. You need to be the best artist and creative, but you got to be smart. And your agents and managers have to take care of you in that. Yeah. But yeah. when they don't, you have to take care of it. So I think it's, I think it's both. I think people are trying to be safe, but of course you can't 1000% because then you get tired on no, set and you have to get the shot and then it's like, yeah. you know. Yeah, but you, but I don't know. I, you know, I think there's a reason why SAG-AFTRA doesn't want union actors to sign these waivers. So, you know, if mm. all actors, no matter your union status, said, "No, I'm not going to sign this," yeah, they couldn't. They couldn't shoot it. You know, they would have to let people work without signing it. You know, if, but yeah. I know it's really hard. You know, to to turn down a great role or a great. It's so game. hard. It's just such a like we're living in history. Like we never thought this was going to happen in a million years, and so it's hard. Psyche, it's hard. It's just hard. Mm -hmm. It's just hard. I just think if you do it safe, but even if you're playing it safe, there's no guarantee. But then the other side of it for me is you have to live your life. You just right. have to be really careful. You really, really do. And I think the outbreaks now are coming from people that are having people over their homes that are think are safe and then it's getting spread. So 
eh, it's all sad all the way around, but I try to stay in that positive mindset. And I got to tell you, actors are training their butts off because they want to be ready for when it comes. Yeah, you know? that's the great thing. So, they are really training and keeping their skills up. And that's, that's so important. And how are you training and keeping your skills up of health and mindset? What are you doing for yourself during this time? No, She's I, like, nothing. <laughs> nothing. I think the first month I have twin boys that go, you know, go to high school. So I had to start teaching them high school. Oh, and the quarantine started, so I'm teaching French and social studies, and and I'm like, oh, oh. so that was intense, you know. That but, is so intense. That's why we're connected, though, because I'm a twin. We, we remember that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you know, kids are so resilient and flexible that you get them into a new routine, and they just start to embrace it. And so you just you find a routine in your day where I spend the day gardening, and then I spend the day working, and then I do my podcast and. And, you know, yeah. just, you just keep busy in some kind of structure. What is your podcast? Why don't you uh, give it a shout out? What's your podcast? Sure. I do a true crime podcast with an FBI Oh, yes. Agent. Yes. An FBI agent and a Scotland Yard uh, law enforcement woman. They're both amazing. And it's called Real Crime Profile. It's I'm writing it down. Real yeah. Crime. What's Pro it on? It's on, it's on Apple, um, Apple, to, Apple Podcasts. It's it's everywhere. You can you can find it everywhere. Um, but we've oh. been going for four years, and it's it's an amazing show. Oh, and, you know, get it's we won a couple of awards, and so if you like true crime, if you like um, dramas that are based on true crime, because we cover that too. Uh, we cover oh, this sounds this is right up my alley. I like that. I'm gonna go yeah. check that out for sure. Yeah, you do. Do you remember? And I just want to, Lisa came as a guest of mine to my Maui retreat. And this is my first year, I didn't get to do it, obviously. Oh, I know, so it was a real big, big bummer. But you know what, we have to be malleable. You gotta go with the times, you gotta do it. So um, Lisa was a guest and I just have to say, it was amazing to have you. And, and oops, sorry, true sorry. crime drama, true yeah. crime drama coming in. So um, did you enjoy it coming to Maui? Oh my God. Being in no, heaven. It was terrible. It was awful. <laughs> um, I, not only did I enjoy it, it was an inspiring thing that you do. You know, everybody I met there was was wonderful. And they, you know, it's very funny to see people who've just been on a gigantic hike on a, you know, some <laughs> little somewhere, and then they come in and they've got their scenes ready. Yeah. It's really, it's a really, it, but they seem to love it. And I certainly had a great time. So, so appreciative that you came. Next year is another year. So yeah, it's pretty spiritual. It's pretty incredible. And I was so happy to have you because when you land in Maui, and this is just a promotional for Maui, but there's something that happens. Just every piece of tension floats away. It's true. And it's that's true. how you get present. <laughs> that's yeah. how you get present to all actors, be in Maui. <laughs> yeah. And it's, a, it's Maui in particular, because I went to Oahu the next, the next summer to surf, to learn how to surf. Oh. I Maui, I miss the chill vibe of Maui very, very much. So, yeah. Well, maybe you'll be back with us. <laughs> Before, let me just see what I had another question. Um, how do you feel about how actors contacting you? Because I really promote actors to be courteously aggressive. And if there's an email or if there's a self tape, go through your agent, try to get a self tape. What's your take on that? I think right now I prefer to be contacted via, via my Facebook page. Um, it's just, which the, is, which is <laughs> casting by Lisa Zambetti. Um, some people get, you know, my email and they email me and that's, that's okay. But it's just, it's just better for me to have just one place where I can have discussions with actors and we can, you know, you can put, post your reel there and I can oh. you know, promote something that you're doing on my, on my Facebook page. So that's a really good place to stay in touch with me. And what about if you put out a, uh, a breakdown in a self tape and somebody just randomly sends it in? Are you okay with that? Or does this have to come? How does that work? Does, I mean, do you I go would, through the agent? I would prefer absolutely to go through the agent. It's just, you know, I hate to waste people's time. You know, I just may not be able to get to a self submitted tape. Um, you know, I, I just don't want you to waste your time. If you, but if you ask, sometimes the agent will be like, hey, I know that you, you're not calling in my client, but is it okay if they self-tape for you? That's, that's fine. That seems like a, like a respectful way to, you know, if, even if you don't get an appointment to at least, 
you know, have a, have a shot at your work. So I think it's so important for everyone to have an opportunity. And I think, do you think that since the self taping now is just going to be the primary uh, way of doing it, that more people are going to get seen for things? Do you feel I, that way? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think because there's, I mean, it's not always fun to go through hundreds of self tapes, but you know, sometimes if you're looking for something really specific, you need a gigantic pool to look through and you mm -hmm. can't do that in person. It's just, there's only, you know, so many hours in the day, but you know, if I'm home and I'm looking at self tapes, you know, I, I can do that for a much longer time and get through them quicker. You know, do you watch, do you, when let's, so when you're in the room, okay like the old days, January, February, um, and someone would come in for an audition and it would be a three page scene, but you know, by the first two lines, is that not even correct? Do you stop them or do you allow them to just, you just sit through the whole thing? Oh like, yeah, what's yeah. Your, absolutely. You sit through. <laughs> oh yeah, but, but you're right in that, in the first two lines, we usually know. So if you're, count, if you're rehearsing a scene that's got a big ending and you're, thinking that I'm going to crush this ending, wait till they see the <laughs> ending. You know, we may not see that ending. I see, yeah. Yeah, I see directors do this too when I'm showing them tapes. You know, the first couple of lines are like, okay, next, next, next. You know, they really <laughs> will blow through auditions. So make sure the starts of your scenes are very, very strong. Yep. Very, very strong. Um, opening moment, moment before, internal life. It just has to be there. You have to be dropped in. And to me, I don't know how you feel about that. It's not necessarily about the lines. It's about the emotional uh, stuff that goes on underneath. Absolutely. Also, I have a question for you on Criminal Minds, because I coach a lot of actors that would say, oh, that character is sobbing. So now when an actor comes in and then they get in their head and they're not sobbing, do they really want the actor to be sobbing? Or is it the essence of the, the feeling? What what resonates with you most? I mean, I think we don't want anything to feel pushed, you know, or manufactured. Mm -hmm. We want it to feel genuine. So I, I right. definitely don't have to be sobbing if it's not there, but it's, it can be very effective to, at some point, have the emotions overtake you. You know, mm. that's different than coming in sobbing. You know, but you know, most people don't want to cry. I mean, when you're in a tragic situation, you're trying not to cry. Yes. Right? So then when the, uh, when the emotions take you over, that's such a vulnerable moment. And so that's kind of what we're looking for, or at least what I'm looking for, because I know actors who can cry like fucking, you know, drop a <laughs> and cry. so that doesn't really impress most of us very much but it's it's sort of the the wave of emotion that that we're looking for because that's and it also it also has to relate to the material because actors who like you said can cry like that it might not have anything to do it might become self-indulgent and then it's like eh. exactly yeah i think there the audience that what oh, you totally know there was one actor who came in and he was making a real meal out of the scene and he started to cry <laughs> it was like he had a single teardrop just drip down his face and i'm like dude come on i mean but at least wipe that? it <laughs> yeah exactly like nobody would just like let those oh it was just it was just showing off a yeah. skip in a way so yeah and 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 what actors really need to know that it's not about the crying it really isn't it's it fine. really isn't I think it's more that the audience should cry for you. And I think that if you are sobbing, sometimes you're sobbing for all the wrong reasons. And even though sometimes it says in the script to be sobbing, those actors have booked it that aren't sobbing, yes? Absolutely. Because exactly. they found a different, different way to tell that story. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So before we close out, and I'm so appreciative of you coming, can we give some inspiration to actors out there who are just starting? Give me three things of advice that you would give to them to keep going upward and moving upward and having faith in themselves and their career. Okay. Well, they should definitely keep studying with people like you, Sherry, who Aww. give them, you know, give them the truth about their skills, hold a mirror up to their true skills and try to get them more and more competitive and give them a network, you know, a home to be in. So that's very important. Mm -hmm. um, see it as the long game. You know, you have to really love this kind of a life because mm -hmm. there is no linear progression the way in other other uh, vocations where you're a doctor or blah, 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 or a lawyer, yeah. like, you know, an actor, one day you're a series regular and then you're not, and then you're this, you know, 
it, it just goes all over the place and you have to understand that ride and and have for yourself what is my expectation of success like for me what is successful was it you know getting five auditions this month or you know and make it doable you know mm. so that you can just just keep feeling good about yourself and not take in all of the rejection and i mean the third the third thing I would say is just respect your process. Give mm. yourself things you need. You know, it used to be, you know, we used to have in-person auditions. So you'd have to make sure your car has gas, that you've got <laughs> a job that you can get out of for the day, that you have a pet sitter, a babysitter. Like create the life around you that will support this, this love. Otherwise, you're just mm. going to be battling yourself. You're not going to take care of yourself. So, you know, give yourself plenty of time to get to, to appointments or, you know, give yourself plenty of time to do um, your self tapes. Just be good to yourself. Um, I think that's really important. And actors sometimes and to, are not good to They themselves. beat themselves up and you don't have to beat yourself up. You just, it's really about the storytelling. There's a story on that page. It's their job to tell it. And it's really hard for actors, you know, because you're a casting director, they want to subconsciously please you. But I do believe, and maybe you'll agree, that the actors who don't want to please you, but want to be organic to who they are and tell the sculpted yep. story will get them a lot further yes. than anything. Absolutely. When we can tell actors who are pleasers and who are trying to make the right choice for me instead mm. of having the artist, and this is the way I want mm -hmm. to play this role, and also walking in with a sense of yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, that's very attractive. To see someone who's comfortable in their own skin, that's that's that really will make you stand out for sure it's the key it's the key guys really find out who you are know yourself inside and out and then get your isms into the work drama or comedy yes yep absolutely thank you so much for okay. popping on with us um just a little bit of inspiration you guys stay strong out there the industry is going to come back because we are resilient and everybody needs to work so Stay yeah. courteously aggressive out there, guys. Thank you so much. I'm so appreciative of your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you really soon. Hugs, hugs.